So that your life can change. If your life change, if you're connected to here, then we all change. And we become partakers of whatever the Father is doing in you. Because ultimately, that's what it's all about. Sir. Amen? Amen. Moving towards what the Father has. And that's why we've been talking about migration. We want to migrate. We want to move forward. We want to be a people who are always uh, in transition. You know, moving towards God's expected, his, his expectations and his expected end for us. And... Uh, so, we've been looking at Abraham. We're going to go to Genesis 12. We've been looking at Abraham. The father of our faith. Abraham was a progenitor of uh, our faith. According to the scriptures, and what Paul wrote to the church in Rome, I think it's the 15th chapter, he said that uh, the scripture is given for our admonition and our learning. So that through them we may have patience and hope through the comfort of the scriptures. So we we want to allow, uh, that's the lens we like to look through. We like to look into what God has already pre-recorded for us and see if he can open up our understanding a little deep. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we started off in chapter before, in chapter 11, and we saw... That the original plan was given to Terra. Terra died. Mm -hmm. He wandered. Never made it to the promised land. And you can use a whole bunch of connotations about what his name means. And Haran, his son, also couldn't go to the promised land. But one of his sons, by the name of Abram, mm -hmm. decided to move forward mm -hmm. in the things that God has. Mm -hmm. And so this is what brings us to this particular section in scriptures. And we can look at it and says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land, what's that? That I will show you. I like scriptures that says show. Because show has to do with perception, vision. He says the land. And that land is not just a plot of land. Prophetically, it's talking about assignment. I mean, God has to bring us out of some things mm -hmm. to give us a better picture yes, sir. Yes. of what our assignment is. Yes. Right? I mean, know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. He brought us out so that we can enter into our, the, his plan, and his purpose, his expectations, yes. what he had in his heart from the foundations of the world. Yes. And as a prophetic picture, as a prototype, we're going to look into a little further into. Abraham and Abram and some of the things that kind of congested him and some things he did right, some things he did wrong, mm -hmm. and truly the father had to work it out according to his counsel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to look and see, even though God gave him a promise, he had flaws. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if anybody yeah. in this building can, can agree with that. Yeah. I just refuse to allow my flaws to be a commentary yes, in my Amen. life. In fact, I won't allow my past to be a commentary <laughs> to my future. <laughs> I mean, I got a past. All of us got a past. And sometimes, how I many know you got to get past your past? Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to get past our past. And this is why we start and we look. And I don't know if I gave you the seven separations on, uh, I think yes, I did, right? Yes, I mentioned two, but I know you guys as good student, students of Scripture, you went home and you, sometime this week you looked at it and said, God, show me that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So I can be in sync with what the pastor is going to say so I can have my ground tilled. <laughs> because that's what happens when a pastor gives you a instructions ahead, even though he don't give you the coordinates or the a exact address, it should cause you to have some type of desire to go and at least search it out and you know attempt to, right? Mm -hmm. You may not have clarity, but you search it out. So we said the seven separations of Abraham. Mm -hmm. He had seven. Mm -hmm. And of course the seven is not specific. Mm -hmm. Although they are in sequence, what I'm gonna talk about, 
they're not specific on the surface. You can't go and say, well, hey, you know, I looked at Abraham, I found he said it. So you had to get a compilation mm -hmm. of his life and allow the Lord to give you a linear view of it. And so we're going to build in a linear, it's going to be prophetic, but it's going to be linear. It's going to be line upon line, okay? Mm -hmm. The first thing we said is country. Second thing we said, it was the father's house, so kindred. Then the, the third thing we said, Egypt. Right? And a lot. Oh, boy. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Yeah. And five, when he came in contact with Melchizedek in Genesis 14, he decided, he made a statement that is so profound that it keep you out of trouble. You know, y'all know who Melchizedek is, right? Uh, he's a high priest, mm -hmm. a sailor. Yeah. Some say it was probably Shem. Mm -hmm. I'm going to agree because Shem was around. One of the three sons of Noah, uh, uh, Noah was still around. So it probably was Shem. Then others say it was uh, a theophany, a Christophany, a Jesus. Because Jesus is a representation in the book of Hebrews of the Melchizedek order. Which order we're partaking of. That's the order that we're headed towards. Mm -hmm. We're coming out of the Levitical order. I know everybody's trying to restore a plot of land and, and, and give the priests to kind of resurrect the priesthood and to get some heifers, I mean, red heifers. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, there's people that are trying to recreate the old system, the mosaic system. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an obsolete system because in the book of Hebrews it said he found fault yes. with it. Yeah. And he said also he disannulled it. So if I go back to establish what God has deemed unlawful, mm -hmm. then I transgress the covenant. It's not my message. I just want to put that plug in just in case somebody watches. Yeah. Then we, we, the number six, uh, we're going to look at the, the prototype we're going to look at is what? Ismail. All of these things are our present structure, uh, struggles. Mm -hmm. Every last one, you probably say, well, I don't know what is that, but I'm the, the principle. <laughs> These principles. And last but not least, we got to get to Isaac. I don't know about you, but Isaac is, uh, his name means laughter, but he's also the son of the promise. Yes. And I hope I got some people in the building that are son of the promise. Sure. Children of the promise. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 the son of the problem. But let's go to country. We talked about country, country. Not being country, but we talked about country. We got country folks. We got country bumpkins. We just got country folks. Amen. This country, it's like to be, you know. We're not talking about a plot of land. We're not talking about a rural area. We're not talking about townships. But we're talking about country. Country, we're talking about mindsets. Yeah. Tell your neighbor it's a mindset. Yeah. So all of these seven things, these seven separations are going to help us to readjust our mindset. Yeah. Amen. 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 Then we went over and uh, looked at Hebrews 11. We, we, we understood that if we're going to leave our country, if we're going to leave the comfort zone, if we're going to leave our past behind, first thing we need to encounter is the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you that we need a word. We need a word. <laughs> yeah, I know people just want the written word, but we need a proceeding word. We need, because yes. see, what prophecy is, is it's a tailor-made word mm -hmm. for you. See, a word in season, it says in Proverbs 15 to 23, a word in season, how good it is. Yeah. Another place in Proverbs, it says it's like a silver apples. Mm -hmm. yeah, silver apples, redemption, apples, mm -hmm. apples are important. But, anyway. but we need a word. Amen? Amen. We need a word. It's so much so that Jesus even told us that man don't live on alone. But what? Every word. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We want to canonize it. We want to indoctrinate it. We want to put it in bylaws. That's that word alone. But we need a word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we need a word that God can speak to us in real time. That's what prophetic words, it comes to give, as I said previously, it's a come and preview. It's the trailer of life. If you want to go see a show, you, they, you go and look at the trailers. And, and according to the trailers, 
kind of tricky though. Because <laughs> sometimes the trailers is just about <laughs> better than the actual. Yeah. yeah, you waste three hours and it took them two minutes and the two minute trailers is better. <laughs> yeah, they do. You know, they show the best right there up front. But I'm here to tell you, we need to find the word of the Lord. We need a church that's built upon the word of the Lord. We need a church that is progressive in the understanding of God. If we're going to lead the country, if we're going to leave everything that we've become common to, that we've become familiar with, we need God to intervene in our life. And the way he intervenes is not necessarily in what's written because it's vast, but somehow he gives us a concise version of himself. And he begins to speak to us, amen, on an individual basis. Just like at Pentecost. Yes. Pentecost, there was a sound of a rupture, mighty wind. Remember Acts 2, 1 through 4? They were gathered together in one accord. All of a sudden, heaven came into the room. Yes. Then what was the report outside of the room? Every man heard him in their own language. Mm -hmm. See, we need a supernatural encounter with the things of God so that every man, all of us, it was 17 nations represented there and 17 nations heard God individually. Yeah. That's what we need. We need an upper room experience. Yes. 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 Yeah, we need an upper room experience because we don't you know, as I said before, because when you really get exposed to the Word of God and you really discover that God is progressive and He's not necessarily narrow, as cessationism tells us, that with, after the canonization of scriptures, God is not speaking no more, and all of the other foolishness, and a lot of the ecumenical churches has bamboozled and hoodwinked the church and actually has taken away our destiny. And giving us that antichrist label. 